Do you know in computer dialect, tree is a data structure that looks like an inverted tree, having the root on top and leaves at the bottom. They are used to represent data that are hierarchically related. An example is the folder hierarchy in your computer. Here in a tree data structure, the members are called nodes. And lines connecting the nodes are called edges. The topmost node is called the root node. Parent nodes have one or more child nodes. The bottom nodes having no children are called leaf nodes. If you look closer, the path between two nodes consists of the nodes. Those are visited while moving through the branches that connect them. This process of navigating a tree is called traversal. There are different tree types such as a binary tree, binary search tree, AVL tree, red-black tree, and many more. In this video, we're going to discuss the tree type Merkle tree, which is a very special tree with some interesting properties. Do you know, the Merkle tree stores hash values instead of actual data? You might now think what is hashing? Hashing is the process of converting data to a fixed size, unique representation called hash value. Secure hash algorithm, or SHA-256, is the commonly used hash function. The hash functions have certain important properties, like from the hash value, one cannot trace the input data. Even a small change made in the input, can result in a totally different hash value. The size of the hash value remains constant, even if the size of the input is different. Isn't it interesting? Let's now create a Merkle tree for a set of words. Let's assume a list of blockchain names. Take the hash value of each data item, and these will be called the leaf nodes. Now group the leaf nodes into pairs, and create a parent node for each pair. Since we have an odd number of data items, the multi-chain node does not have a pair, therefore it duplicates the node, and does the pairing. It continues the pairing until it reaches the root node. The root node now acts as a digital fingerprint of the data set represented by the tree. If you look at it, you can see that even a slight change in the data will change the hash value of the leaf node, ultimately changing the values of all nodes till the root node. Merkle trees allow faster search operations. One can easily check whether a data item is represented by the tree, without traversing the entire tree. For example, if we need to check whether Hyperledger is included in the list. The data we have is the hash value of Hyperledger, and the root hash. One can recalculate the root node by tracing the path from H, E to the root node. For this, we need some extra information. If we get the missing values, the root hash can be recalculated. If the new root hash is equal to the previous root hash, it denotes hyperledger is present in the list. The extra values that are required to recalculate the root hash are called Merkle path. The presence of a data item can be verified by producing the Merkle path for it. Now the question is why do we use the Merkle tree? 1. Merkle trees store hash values of data that require less storage space. 2. Search operations are faster. 3. Hashing helps to track changes easily. Do you know Merkle trees are used in various distributed applications, where data is replicated and stored by multiple parties in the network? If anyone tries to alter data at one location the root hash value will change. Thus others in the network can detect this alteration easier.